In this Photoshop tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add graphics in perspective to another image. Let's get started. So let's begin our little tutorial by first discussing what we really need to begin with in terms of a good base image. Now, stirs are a very, very good example of this. And hopefully once you've kind of seen a tutorial, you'll get the understanding as to how this in perspective graphics tutorial works and therefore where you can apply. But stirs are a very, very good example because they've got changing planes. We've got like nice flat horizontals and then verticals changing again so we've got a nice pattern to work with so that's why I'm going to use this image and use these uh, top set of stirs just so that's why I'm going to use this image here because we've got a nice set of stirs which was shot pretty straight on there's a slight angle to it um, but this is where this perspective tool is really really going to help so I've also got the texture that I'm actually going to use as well and we're going to lay it across these stirs to make it look almost like a colorful carpet so to begin with I'm just going to minimize that image so we haven't got it on screen as a distraction what we now need to use is this filter at the top, go to filter and we come down to vanishing point. So that's going to give us a separate screen here to work with. So let me just bring it on to screen there. Now what we're going to need to use is the create plane tool. So it's pretty much set by default anyway. Um, but if it's not, it's just that second icon down there underneath from the arrowhead. Now I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer. Let's just use some control and plus. And what we need to do is actually select our um, area basically for our initial perspective. Um, now there's some nice boundary boxes uh, that we can, I think we can work to, some nice lines and guidance we can work to with the steps here. But all we're looking to do is just to press down and draw a line. So we're gonna try and keep it as accurate as possible. Try not to just kind of go too far off the angle. Try and keep it in line with the actual subject you're working from there. And then also now going to draw out the box to the edge of the step. And it automatically completes the box for me there. We can go closer in and we can kind of finitely change it a little bit more as well. So once we've got that set, now we've got our great horizontal here. But we now also want the, the perspective of the graphic to run up the stairs as well as along the next step again. So we need to add some more perspectives. So basically now we're just gonna go back to that perspective tool and one more time we are going to add another perspective but this time we're gonna go vertical. So by holding down the uh, Alt key or Alt Options key on a Mac, we can now drag upwards. Now if we drag it downwards, it would fill the perspective of the following step but we need to go back upwards and we need to make sure we do that also from the um, the back effectively of this step here so the anchor point that would be kind of closest to our next perspective. I'm going to go a little bit closer in because as you can see there's some areas that haven't perfectly um, hit the edge of the step there and we want to make sure these selections are as accurate as possible so just grab that little anchor point uh, and then just pull it exactly where it needs to be. You can also by holding down alt again you can just shift individual points without changing the perspective too much of the other ones. So it's really important to make sure that we get this, this selection area as accurate as possible. So now we've done that, we need to do basically the same again. So working from this top anchor point here, we've returned back to the Create Plane tool. And now we're going to drag our next plane out. Again, just to the shadows. And effectively, it's the same process over and over again. We're going to go up. And then we're going to go back to the same tool again. So it's repeating it really to make sure we cover as much of the area that we want to use as part of this tutorial. So we've made our selection there. Now, if you ever find at any point that your selection area isn't blue, if it's red or it's yellow, that's basically Photoshop saying it's not really going to work. The, the perspective is very, very hard to pick out. Maybe you're not using um, a surface or an object that it can clearly see the differential uh, change of perspectives within it. So this is why I say stirs are very, very good in that instance. Anywhere that's got a clear vertical and horizontal um, that the camera, well, not the camera so much, Photoshop can actually pick up. But anyway, once we've got that area selected there, we're simply just going to zoom in a little bit closer and we're going to press OK. Now when it returns to our image, 
it doesn't look like anything's happened. Don't worry, it has saved it. If you go back to uh, the vanishing tool point, you'll be able to see it. But for this purpose now, what we need to do is bring back in our graphic. So let's just get our graphic file. We had it to the side there. And now we're just going to copy and paste it. So that's simply a case of going edit, select all, edit, copy, and then we'll open our other image here, make that active, just minimize that, and then just go edit and paste. Okay, so this is our graphic that we're working with there. So that's basically what's going to fill our little kind of carpet that we're going to create now on that image. So let's make a selection of this top layer now. Let's just actually rename this one to graphic so we know what we're working with. Uh, by holding down control, you can then press control and then click on the layer, and that will then create a little boundary box by it. So we're just going to make another copy of that. So we're going to go edit and then copy. And we can actually then hide this layer if we wanted to, just so we don't want another distraction. And we're going to create another layer now. So this is what our perspective uh, graphic is actually going to go on. So we can call this one graphic 2 if we wanted to. You don't have to rename them. It's completely your call. Um, now what we need to do is return to our vanishing point tool. So here we are in our vanishing point tool. Again, you can see all the work that we did a little bit earlier. Now to actually get our graphic um, on screen, we're going to do control and V, which is paste. We can see our boundary box in the top corner here that actually contains our graphic, but because it's only going to show within the selection area that we made, we just need to drag it down. So if we drag it down, you can actually see now more where it's going to land. So let's go in a little bit closer. And now we need to try and refine the tool and to do that, we can use Control and T. So that is the transform tool. So that would also be Command and T on a Mac computer. So by using that tool, you'll see you get little options. If you go closer in, it may just be a little bit easier to work that way. And then you get a couple of arrow heads that can either change things on the diagonal, horizontal, or rotate it. Um, and then all we're looking to do is basically position our layer so we've got the right type of graphic. We can move things left and right a little bit just if we wanted to try and make sure we fill as much of the area as possible. When you're ready, then you can also then start to extend that uh, graphic onto the other steps so we can get the horizontal and the vertical, etc. so we can keep changing it all. To do that, we simply hold down the Alt key again, and now we then drag it onto the next perspective. So you can see it's now changed to be the horizontal, the, uh, the flat step that we've got here. You can see that you get the arrowheads again, which we need to change those and just pull them along to the point of the edge of the next step. Now try to make sure there's no gaps in between these areas. That's where the, the problems can arise. So again, let's carry on with the next one. You can kind of pull things down. You can get more colors and different colors depending upon the image that you've used. Same again, we're gonna pull it out onto the next step. So just try to make each click and drag for each individual steps, just so you can control the, the colors. Try not to spread it too much down onto the next steps. So just do them one at a time. I find it tends to be a little bit easier like that. Okay, it's the same again. I'm gonna drag it down so it looks, doesn't look too much like the step above it there. There we go. So I've got my step basically laid out with all the different horizontals uh, and the verticals on each of the steps there. So hopefully it's starting to give us a, the effect a bit more clearly. Um, once you're ready, effectively, once you're happy with all the refinements, just simply press OK. And there you go. We can see our graphic in perspective on all the steps there. Now, there is always a little bit of further refinements to do because it doesn't necessarily look natural here. It looks great, but it doesn't look exactly how we need it to be. It's, it's kind of pretty OTT and it does look really photoshopped at this point, but that's absolutely fine because there's a number of different ways that we can go on to refining it. As I said, we would a little bit earlier to sort some of these edges out. Firstly, the opacity layer is going to be very, very helpful. We can always just reduce the opacity of the layer a little bit just to show some of that texture that brings through in the background. There's also a layer blend mode that will really, really help. Uh, Multiply is a very, very good one for bringing out uh, a little bit more detail in the darkness. Um, so it hides a lot of the highlights, doesn't make it look too polished. So you can use the Multiply tool. The screen tool does the same, but for the brightness, but really with us working with this kind of darker stone on the steps, I think Multiply probably would be a little bit better from there. We can also use the Layer Blends mode. 
Um, so if we double click on our layer, on our graphic perspective, and actually go to the blending options here, and using our blend if sliders at the bottom, we've got our underlying layer, which is gonna help us bring out a bit more texture. So if we wanted to soften the effect a little bit further, brings through some more of that that granite and the stone to make our perspective, our, our kind of image here look a little bit more worn, then we can make the slider kind of a little bit more away from the base and it can just help to break things up ever so slightly. But I think it's actually quite good, just a little bit off the base is fine for us for this example. So I'm gonna keep that there. Now what we need to add in is a layer mask. I think it's something that we said at the start because it would help us refine some of the edges that overstep some of the steps. So simply adding a layer mask is really easy, just using the icon at the very, very bottom of our layers. So as long as we've got our brush tool set and it's on black in our color swatches, if we just right click, make sure the hardness is pretty soft. So what we're gonna try and do is whir away some of the edges. We're gonna go nice and close and just very softly brush some of the edges. Now our opacity is set quite low, it's around about 28%. It's possibly from another tutorial. And so I'm just gonna raise that back to 100. I think actually in hindsight, I may just take it down a little bit, just so we can fade out the edges a little bit more. So it looks a little bit more genuine. As maybe this, uh, this kind of painting's been there for a while. Now it does cross over, this is kind of a really helpful um, point to look at now. It does cross over a little light here that's on the step. Now if you've got an issue where you are, it, your kind of perspective, your graphic that you've used crosses over a subject, then it's simply just a case of using this layer mask technique just to mask it out. I think I will actually just use something like the uh, lasso tool and just make a selection around our light here. And just using that brush again, that layer mask brush, I'm just going to brush over it a few times just because our opacity is set to 73%. We may need to do it a couple of times just to make sure the effect's fully gone from that light. And it makes it look a lot more genuine in this instance. So just brushing around the edges. You don't have to do this. It really depends upon the project that you're working on as to how refined you want it to look. If you want it to look kind of quite edited, obviously you may not want to do this. You may not want to change the layer blend at all. If you want to keep the colors really nice and vibrant, it is completely personal choice as with any creative projects like this. But there we go. Let's zoom out and see what we've actually got. So that's brilliant. That's a really nice kind of little waterfall of color running down the wall, uh, running down the steps there. So you can play around with this and make these selection areas much larger, but you need to make sure you've got a nice, clearly defined uh, horizontal and vertical perspectives to work upon. But there we go. That's our example of in perspective graphics. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial from iPhotography. If you have, keep looking out for more. Thank you very much for watching.